Hi everyone, I'm Doc Ken and welcome to Zoology Chapter 1 entitled Introduction to the Living Animal. First, let's talk about zoology. Zoology or animal biology or animal science is the field of biology that involves the study of animals. The word zoology comes from the Greek word zo means animal and logy means the study of. It encompasses all aspects of scientific knowledge about animals like embryonic development, evolution, behavior, ecological distribution, and classification. Zoology is broken into many branches because there are so many different ways to study animals. It's also broken into branches based on which animals are being studied. So first, before we understand what is biology, we have to understand first science and its branches. First, let's define what is science. Science is a systematic body of knowledge based on careful observation and experimentation. Systematic means process. When we talk about process, it refers to step-by-step -step procedure. Step 1, step 2, step 3. You cannot proceed to step 3 without undergoing steps 1 and 2, and that is a process. A good example of this is a pen. When using a pen for writing, it is systematic. It has process. When writing letter L, we have to write a vertical line to be followed by horizontal line at the end portion below of the vertical line. It has process, yes. Do we observe it using our senses, which pertains to observation, such as sense of sight? Yes. Do we have experimentation or actual application? Yes. If it is useful in our daily lives, it becomes proven knowledge. Pen is used for writing for us to be able to communicate then if it becomes useful in our daily lives, it becomes proven knowledge. Therefore, it is a science. Another example is a chair. When using chair, it has a process. You have to sit first and second, you have to lean back for us to be able to be seated properly and to be relaxed. Do we observe it? Yes. Do we have actual application? Yes, when it becomes useful in our daily lives, it becomes science. Science has two major branches. What are those? Social science and natural science. Social science refers to the study of people, culture, and society. It's more on social studies. You study people in the community, the culture of people, the society. While natural science, it refers in seeking the natural world. Why there's a tree? water, land, air. It's all about curiosity and discovery in the natural world. Natural science has two major branches. We have pure science and applied science. When we talk about pure science, it pertains to pursuing knowledge only. You study biology, chemistry, physics, and earth science for knowledge only. That's it. You study blood circulation for you to be able to know the process of oxygenation that's it for knowledge only while applied science you gain knowledge to solve a particular problem a good example of this is the research you discovered something to solve a problem you find a solution or strategy for a better result another example is calculator we are having difficulty in calculating things in the past that scientists invented something for us to compute it easily we discovered calculator for easy computation. Pure science has two major branches. We have biological science and physical science. Biological science, which pertains to living things, while physical science refers to the study of non-living things or physical quantities. Biological science has two main traditional branches. What are those? Botany, which is the study of plants and zoology that deals with the study of animals. When we talk about physical science, it has three major branches. What are those? Chemistry, physics, and earth science. When we talk about chemistry, it is the study of the properties, compositions, and structures of a matter. When we talk about physics, 
It is the study of interaction between matter and energy. And lastly, Earth science, which refers to the study of planet Earth, which includes geology, hydrology, meteorology, and astronomy. Question. How do living things differ from non-living things? So this can be answered by comparing and contrasting living things to non-living things. Just remember the acronym FOM GRIM. F stands for form and size. O stands for organization. M stands for movement. G stands for growth and life cycle. R stands for reproductive. I stands for irritability. And lastly, M stands for metabolism. First, form and size. Living things have characteristic form and size within certain limit. Most of them are also arranged as definite individuals, while in non-living things, materials vary widely. Organization. Living things are made up of cells which are assembled into interrelated system for performing the life processes. They rearrange and combine the chemical elements for their need. Non-living things, on the other hand, cannot be recombined materials and their structure depends on chemical presence and mode of formation. Next, we have movement. Living can move by themselves, while non-living things can move with the help of an external force. Fourth, growth and life cycle. Living things exhibit internal growth, while non-living things exhibit external growth. Living things grow by the development of new parts between or within older ones and may replace parts during life. Each individual has a definite life cycle birth, growth, maturity, lifespan, and death. If non-living things grow, they do that by external addition and there is no orderly cycle of change. Example, the salt in the container and the ice in the freezer increase in size because only of the addition of new materials on their surface. Next, reproduction. This is defined as the ability of the organism to create another one of the same kind. Living things reproduce by using the materials within their bodies, a characteristic which non-living things do not have. Next, irritability. Living things react to changes in the environment. This act as stimuli that induce responses by the organism. The degree of response is often disproportionate to that of the stimulus and the organism is not permanently altered by the stimulus. In non-living things, there is a definite quantitative relationship between the intensity of the environment change and the reaction produced as in the expansion of metal heat. Lastly, metabolism. The word metabolism is defined as various vital life processes, which includes all the changes that the material taken as food undergoes. There are two phases of metabolism, namely anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism is called as the constructive or building up phase. A good example of this is the photosynthesis in plants. Catabolism is the destructive or breaking down phase. This involves the release of energy by breaking food substances through respiration. Let's now proceed to the characteristics of living things. 1. Metabolism. 2. Responsiveness. 3. Growth and development. 4. Evolution 5. Adaptation 6. Homeostasis 7. Genetic Control First, let's talk about metabolism. Metabolism is a term that is used to describe all chemical reactions involved in maintaining the living state of the cells and the organisms. Metabolism can be conveniently divided into two categories, one, catabolism, 
the breakdown of molecules to obtain energy, a good example of this is digestion. And anabolism, the synthesis of all compounds needed by the cells, a good example of this is photosynthesis made by the plants. Next, responsiveness. Responsiveness is a reaction that can be brought about by learned experience, heredity, or adaptation. A response can be an immediate, involuntary action or purposeful behavior. Evolution is a slower but more enduring form of responsiveness. Next, growth and development. Growth is defined as an irreversible constant increase in the size of an organ or even an individual cell. Put differently, growth is the most fundamental characteristics of living bodies accompanied by various metabolic processes that take place at the cause of energy. Growth refers to the increase in mass and size of a body, while development is the process where a particular organism not only grows physically but acquires mental and physiological growth as well. Let's now move on to evolution. In biology, evolution is the change in the characteristics of a species over several generations and relies on the process of natural selection. The theory of evolution is based on the idea that all species are related and gradually change over time. Evolution relies on there being genetic variation in a population which affects the physical characteristics of an organism. Some of these characteristics may give the individual an advantage over other individuals, which they can then pass on their, to their offspring. When the same adaptation evolved independently under similar selection pressures, for example, flying insects, birds, and bats have all evolved the ability to fly, but independently of each other. Next in line, adaptation. The process by which a species becomes fitted to its environment is called adaptation. It is the result of the natural selections acting upon heritable variation over several generations. Organisms are adapted to their environment in a great way in their structure or in their behavior. The presence of thick fur of the polar bear helps them to keep warm is an example of structural adaptation. While birds migrate in winter to get food all years is an example of behavioral adaptation. Next, homeostasis. Homeostasis is the ability to maintain stability while adjusting to the conditions that are optimal for survival. If homeostasis is successful, life continues. If unsuccessful, disaster or death ensures. And lastly, Genetic control. Genetic control refers to the transmission of genetic materials from generation to generation to preserve the traits of the species. This is also called inheritance or biological inheritance, which is the passing on a traits from parents to their offspring, either through asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction. The offspring cells or organism acquire the genetic information of their parents. Let's now move on to the specialization in zoology. We have anatomy, cytology, ecology, histology, embryology, genetics, parasitology, physiology, and taxonomy. First, let's talk about anatomy. Anatomy is the branch of science concerned with the bodily structure of humans, animals, and other living organisms especially as revealed by dissection and the separation of parts. Anatomy is the branch of biology, which can be also a specialization in zoology, which studies how various parts of an organism are connected and how they are related to other parts, both spatially and functionally. Anatomy has many subdisciplines, and it is used in many different fields. In general, there are two main types of anatomy, gross or macroscopic anatomy, and microscopic anatomy. However, most biology specialties require knowledge of both types of anatomy. Next, cytology. Cytology is a branch of biology that can be a specialization also in zoology, 
that deals with the structure, function, multiplication, pathology, and life history of cells. It's also a study of microscopic appearance of cells, especially for the diagnosis of abnormalities and malignancies. Ecology Ecology is a branch of biology that can be a specialized in zoology concerning the spatial and temporal patterns of the distribution. Ecology is also the study of relationships between organisms and their environment and the balances between these relationships. Biodiversity plays an important role in ecosystem services, which by definition maintain and improve human quality of life. Next in line, embryology. Embryology deals with the study of prenatal development of gametes, which refers to sex cell, fertilization, and development of an animal from fertilized egg to birth or hatching. Additionally, embryology encompasses the study of congenital disorders that occur before birth, known as teratology. Genetics. Genetics is the study of genes and inheritance in living organisms. This branch of science has fascinating history stretching from 19th century when scientists began to study how organisms inherited traits from their parents. It's also the study of mechanisms of transmission of traits from parents to offspring. Histology. Histology is the study of microscopic anatomy of tissues. Every tissue is unique. Based on many functions an organism carries out, histology uses an advanced imaging techniques to analyze and identify the tissues and structure present. The histology of different tissues can be used to identify a known tissue, provide clues to function of tissue, or even identify diseases in the cell of an organism. Parasitology. Parasitology is a scientific study of parasites, their hosts, and the relationship between the parasite and the host. Parasitology is a branch of science that is concerned with parasites and parasitism. Parasitism is a form of symbiosis in which one organism benefits at the expense of another organism, usually of different species. The association may also lead to the injury of the host. An example of parasitism is the association between the parasitic tapeworms and the vertebrate host. Physiology is the study of all the physical and chemical processes that take place in organism in order for them to perform all the functions and activities associated with living. Physiology can be studied at the molecular level all the way up to the level of entire organisms and includes everything in between like cells, tissues, organs, and body systems. It involves studying how the different parts of the body work separately and together to allow an organism to function properly. Lastly, taxonomy. Taxonomy in a broad sense that science of classification, but more strictly the classification of living and extinct organisms. Biological classification is a good example of this. Taxonomy is the science of naming describing and classifying organisms and includes all animals and microorganisms of the world. Let's now proceed to the specialization in zoology by taxonomic categories. We have entomology, herpetology, ichthyology, mammalogy, ornithology, and lastly, protozoology. First, let's talk about entomology. Entomology is a branch of zoology Dealing with the scientific study of insects, the zoological categories of genetics, taxonomy, morphology, physiology, behavior, and ecology are included in this field of study. Also included are the applied aspects of economic entomology, which encompasses the harmful and beneficial impacts of insects on humans and their activities. Entomology also plays an important role in studies of biodiversity and assessment of environmental Next, herpetology. Herpetology is a branch of zoology that deals with reptiles, examples, snakes, lizard, turtles, and amphibians, example, frogs, toads, salamanders. 
This branch of zoology conducts studies on these animals to understand their biology, ethology, ecology, evolution, and medical importance, such as the toxin and the venoms from certain species may be useful in human medicine. Certain venoms have been utilized as a source of anticoagulants for managing and treating strokes and heart attacks. Next, ichthyology. Ichthyology is the branch of zoology that deals with the study of fishes devoted to the study of fish, including bony fish, cartilaginous fish, and jawless fish. Next, mammalogy. Mammalogy is a scientific study of mammals. Interest in non-human mammals dates far back in prehistory, and the modern science of mammalogy has its broad foundation in the knowledge of mammals possessed by primitive peoples. In studying mammals, they can observe their habitats, contribution to the ecosystem, their interaction, and the anatomy and physiology. A mammalogist can do a broad variety of things within the realm of mammals. Ornithology. Ornithology is a branch of zoology that deals with birds. Several aspects of ornithology differ from related disciplines due to partly high visibility and aesthetic appeal of birds. Most marked among this is the extent of studies undertaken by amateurs working within the parameters of strict scientific mythology. The science of ornithology has a long history and studies on birds have helped develop several key concepts in evolution, behavior, and ecology, such as the definition of species, stink, learning, ecological niches, guilds, and conservation. Lastly, protozoology. Protozoology is a branch of zoology that is concerned with the study of protozoa. As such, it may simply be described as the science of protozoa, microscopic eukaryotes that either exist as parasites or free-living organisms. Here, protozoologists focus on the different types of protozoa, their respective characteristics, as well as how they interact with their surroundings as parasites or free-living organisms.